Hello Ellsworth, this is the last story of the year and I'm reading you one of my favourite stories. I used to read this to my children. I love the story and the message in the story and I also love the illustration. So I'm going to try and sit so that I can show you the illustrations at the same time. Here goes. Got to get this right. Once, <clears throat> wise King Solomon ruled in the city of Jerusalem. He built a magnificent temple in the city, a special and sacred place for his people. Every day the king sat in his palace receiving visitors, offering guidance to those who asked and judgment for those who broke his laws. One day, two brothers stood before the king. They were arguing about their land. They came to the king for advice. By law, it should be mine, said one. It's only fair that I have my share, shouted the other. The wise king listened to them argue for a while. They grew louder and angrier until finally he held up his hand for silence. Let me tell you a story, he said, from long ago, before there was a city here, before any temple had been built on this land. This is the story that Solomon told. Long ago, a river valley curved and curled its way through the land from the hills in the east to the sea in the west, its steep sides lined with orchards of olives and almonds. Near the head of the valley, where the river curled around the foot of a rocky hill, there were two villages, each a cluster of white stone huts and animal pens. Two brothers farmed a piece of land on the flat valley floor between the two villages, where the soil was rich and deep, perfect for farming. The elder brother lived in a village on the valley side above the field they shared. The younger lived in the other village, a little down the valley, below the field. Two paths linked the villages, one over the hill which separated them and the other along the valley floor past their field. Every autumn, after the first rains, each brother brought his donkey and together they ploughed the earth and sowed the grain. Every winter, the grain sprouted and grew until springtime, when the heads of wheat swelled and ripened, turning gold by early summer. Then the brothers brought their scythes, cutting and threshing the wheat and pouring the grain into sacks. When all the work was done, the brothers counted up the sacks of grain, dividing them equally, half and half. Each kept an equal portion of straw for his animal's bedding and wheat to grind into flour for baking bread. Then autumn came around and it was time to start ploughing again. In this way, the years passed. The elder brother married and soon had a handful of children to feed at home. Happily, his share of the harvest always gave him enough to last the winter. He was content. The younger brother never married. Some say he never found the right woman. Others say he liked the quiet life. Whatever the truth, he was too content with his lot. One summer, the harvest was the best ever. Each brother stacked the heavy bags of grain, 20 bags each. The elder brother had just finished when he thought of his younger brother. I'm so lucky to have a family, he thought. When I'm old, they'll be there to take care of me. But my poor brother has nobody. He'll need to save for his old age. He needs this grain more than I do. He decided to give his younger brother a surprise gift. When it was dark, he loaded three sacks of grain onto his donkey and led it up over the hill behind his house and down to his brother's village on the other side. It was a cloudy night without moon or stars to light the path. But he knew the route so well, he could have found his way with his eyes closed. Very quietly, he tiptoed into the store and added the three sacks to his brother's pile. He walked home smiling at the thought of his brother's face in the morning. The next 
day, over breakfast, his wife asked him about the harvest. Only 17 sacks this year, he said, but that will be enough if we're careful. His wife looked puzzled. Why only 17? It looked like a good crop. Her husband just shrugged and smiled. While the family was finishing breakfast, his wife ducked into the store, returning a few moments later. Husband, are you so tired you've forgotten how to count? What do you mean? He asked. I've been in the store and there are 20 sacks, not 17. That's impossible. But when he went to the store, he saw that it was true. 20 sacks of grain. How can that be? He wondered. I must have been dreaming. That evening, after sunset, he took another three sacks of grain to his brother's store. This time, to rest his donkey, he took the easier path along the valley floor. Next morning over breakfast, he explained to his wife that there would only be 17 sacks after all, as he had given three away. He pressed his, lips to his, fi his finger to his lips. It's a secret, he whispered. His wife looked at him suspiciously. Are you sure, she asked. I'm quite sure. Come, I'll show you. But when they looked in the store, there were still 20 sacks. His wife was not pleased. Why are you teasing me like this? She demanded. You should tell me the truth. Could it be a miracle, he wondered, or am I just getting old and forgetful? On the third night, he set off at sunset with another three sacks, determined to give his gift. Three days earlier, the younger brother had just unloaded his last sack when he thought about all the children his brother had to feed. He needs the grain more than me, he mused. I know what I'll do. I'll sneak a few extra sacks into his store and he'll have a nice surprise in the morning. When it was dark, he loaded his donkey with three sacks. Under a starless sky, he followed the valley path past the field and up to his brother's village, where he sneaked the grain into his brother's store. The next day, the younger brother noticed something was odd. There were too many sacks of grain in his store. He counted them. 20 sacks. He'd given away three or so there should only be 17 left. How could there be 20? Could it have been a dream? All day he was puzzled and when night fell he loaded three more sacks onto his donkey, determined to help his brother. This time he took the shorter path over the hill and loaded three more sacks into his brother's store and crept back home. Next morning, he checked his grain store again and there were still 20 sacks. How can that be? I must be imagining things, he thought, but tonight I really will do it. That evening, for the third time, he set out up the hill for his brother's village. This time, the moon was full and the night was clear. As he reached the top of the hill, he saw his brother walking towards him, leading a donkey. It was as if he was walking towards his own reflection. Without even speaking, each understood the reason for his brother's journey. Their hearts filled with happiness as they realised the love they had both been shown. That hill between the two villages was the place where the city of Jerusalem began. That blessed spot where the two brothers met became the site of the Holy Temple. With these words, Solomon finished his story. The two men stood in silence and everyone in the court waited to see what they would say. After a long time, the older man looked up. Brother, he said, what is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. It's not yours, it's not mine, but it's ours to share. The brothers embraced and left the court side by side. From that time on, they and their families lived happily together. And there was no story their children enjoyed listening to more than the story of the two brothers 
first told by wise King Solomon. So that was my last story. This picture, I think is beautiful and it has the rainbow and we've seen lots of rainbows recently. It's something that gives us some hope, I think. We're really looking forward to seeing you all again in September. We've really missed you. But we will be together again really soon. And until then, I want you to have a really wonderful holiday. A wonderful holiday. You all deserve it. Your parents have worked really hard. You've been really working really hard. You deserve some time off and some wonderful time together. And remember these brothers, be kind to each other and look after each other. Year six, we're going to see you again in September. September, October, whenever it is. Because, Mrs McFarlane keeps reminding me, you've got pizza to enjoy. And we have got to see you again and we want to get you all together again. I know you'll have already gone off to your new adventures, but then we can hear all about them and we can't wait. So look after yourselves and keep safe and we'll see you again really soon.